QR locomotive. The coupling unit in the open position with the locking pin lifted upwards. To operate the locking pin from either side, a handle extends to the outside of the headstock. The coupling unit in the closed position with the locking pin dropped. The securing bracket for the ball hook when not in use. There are three air coupling hoses, EP, MR and BP. The EP and MR pipes are blinded off with only the brake pipe connecting through. These pipes are blinded off at this point behind the headstock. The sand box, and there are four of these to each bogey. The locomotive has three axles per bogey with a traction motor on each axle. Here you see the other sandbox at the opposite end of the bogey. Here we see the magnet valves for the sand, which are located below the running board. And above that is an isolating cock for the sand air supply. Here you see one of three air reservoirs, one each side below the cab and one in the nose compartment. Here we see the brake cylinder, which you will notice is in the released position. The piston sits slightly out of the cylinder, Remember this when checking piston travel. The battery box, and next to that is the fuel tank with the fuel gauge sight glass. Here we have the horizontal damper on top of the bogey, and just below that the float plate with the vertical damper on the side of the bogey. The radiator filling point. This is pressure fed. There is no valve to open when filling. The traction motor bellow and air ducting. Here you see a cock sealed with a wire. This must not be touched. The bogey brake isolating cock under the running board. There is one for each bogey. Brake adjuster. Notice two bars to stop the arm dropping onto the ground should the pin come out accidentally. Handbrake, which you will see holds two brake cylinders on the front bogey. Here you see the dead engine device in the closed position and in the open position. The dead engine device is located on top of the distributing valve in the nose compartment. You'll also see here the third air reservoir. This is the air compressor located in the engine room. Here you see the oil dipstick and filling point. The compressor is air-cooled through pipes and not water-cooled. Lay rub coupling shaft from main generator to compressor. The main generator. Above that, the roots blower. With a side view of the blower attached to the motor. The traction motor blower and ducting. The auxiliary generator above the main generator, and this is shaft driven from the motor. The load regulator. Crankcase overpressure reset button located below the lay shaft handle. Across to the engine governor. The radiator header tank sight glass. The inlet water temperature gauge. The engine governor showing the reset button and oil sight glass. The engine overspeed reset lever at the rear of the motor. Sump oil filling point. Water pump. Sump oil dipstick for checking oil level. Here we see the air operated rams that control the radiator shutters. There are three of these rams altogether. To manually lock the shutters open, lift the lever on the ram upwards and place the pin in the hole. After use, ensure the pin is put back in the bracket provided. There is an air isolating cock for the shutters located between the rams and above that is the magnet valves for the shutters. In the fan room, the fan has a gearbox which has a sight glass with a cap on top that serves as a dipstick. In the
the spare equipment compartment at the rear of the locomotive, there is a fire extinguisher, flags, air hoses and detonators located in the tube. Also a fire extinguisher is located in the engine room. The locomotive has two tail lights which are located up high and two headlight units. Inside the cab we have the A7EL brake valve and the control console set up to drive as a single unit. The instrument panel. The three switches to the right are engine run, generator field and fuel pump which need to be on to start the loco and when driving as a single unit. As we move across the panel there are various other switches which control lighting. The speedo. Moving across the top of the console we see the fault warning lights and at the left side of the console you'll see a button. This is the ground relay reset button. This is the amp meter and this only indicates the main generator amps, not traction motor amps. Headlight control switch. Throttle and reverser. There is no dynamic brake. Vigilance button. Brake valve cutout cock in the cut in position and in the cut out position. Sanding button. Foot control on the floor. Brake valve setup. Lead position. Independent handle applied position. Automatic brake valve handle running position. Trail position. Both handles removed. Dead position. Independent in running or release. Automatic brake valve removed. Windscreen wiper controls and cab light and cab fan. Activation switch for fixed fire extinguishers in the engine room. Vigilance warning lights and alarm. Electrical cabinet. These three circuit breakers are hot plate, cab heater, auxiliary generator. Voltage regulator cutout switch. Fuse tester, battery field fuse, auxiliary generator fuse. Ground relay and earth link knife switch. Auxiliary generator knife switch. Main start fuse. Battery knife switch. Low voltage indicator lights. Radio circuit breaker. Horn magnet valve and isolating cock below. Back cab wall panel. Detonator signal detector now disconnected. Isolation switch with start and run position. Alongside that are the start and stop buttons. Alongside that the circuit breakers for lights, headlights, local control, control and fuel pump. To the battery charge meter. Now we come to the interface control box. This was fitted to allow the QR locomotive, which is a four pipe system, to operate with the three pipe system. You will see that it has two functions, lead or dead plus trail three pipe. Directly below is a cock which is in the lead dead position and now in the trail position.